Hi everyone, it's Linnea for Scrapping for Less and today we are revealing the Flavor of the Month card kit for August. This month's theme is exotic animals. So let's start with the unboxing and then we're going to go right into me making five cards, one with each of the collections. So collection one is called Always Changing and we're going to start off with the One in a Chameleon stamp set by Lawn Fawn. There's a sequin mix by Scrapping for Less. 18 inches of a dark brown cord by Darice. There's these two cute little flags also by Darice. And then the papers are from the Always Changing Paper Pad by Scrapping for Less. The colors in here really lend themselves to masculine cards, which is so fabulous because I feel like we all kind of struggle with masculine cards. And this color scheme with the browns, the orange, the turquoise is really nice. I love the patterns in here too. And of course they are double-sided. And as I just finished flipping up through here, I just want to say how much I love that Scrapping for Less is doing their own pattern papers. They've been doing it for a couple months now. It's fabulous. So that is collection one. Collection two is slowly and slothy. Sloths are all the rage right now and these cute little slots are adorable so the stamp set is by sunny studio and it's called S thanks a sloth there's a leaf dye by Darice, green rhinestones by Darice, and then the sequins are by scrapping for less and i love that it is like a cream based sequin with those larger bluish purple so so pretty and these papers, these are the Slowly and Slothly papers by Scrapping for Less. So cute. Check out that first one with those sloths like hanging around on the little branches. I love this one too. So super cute. And then the back sides, this floral I'm definitely going to use today because it's gorgeous. And I love the stripes and the polka dots. I love that the reverse of these papers are more like your basic patterns and then the front are the cutesy patterns. So that's collection two in this kit. Collection three is called In the Desert, and it is meerkats themed. So super cute. This stamp set is from Newton's Nook Designs, and it's the meerkat stamp. We have some gold brads, which I'm going to be honest, I don't really use brads on my cards anymore, but I do use them when I'm doing like reveal wheel cards or spinner cards. And so those would be fabulous for those kinds of interactive cards like that. There is this 18 inches of twine with a flower on it by Darice. So pretty. A mustard colored doily also by Darice. And then these gorgeous sequins by Scrapping for Less. The patterns in the in the desert paper kind of remind me of like tribal patterns. I think they're so stunningly gorgeous. I love this little like arrow-ish one. These triangles on the reverse side here, so, so awesome. And I love that these are masculine color too. In fact, my last card is going to be great for a guy card. So moving on to collection four. This one is my favorite collection in any of the Scrapping for Less kits that I've worked with. The papers are absolutely stunning. So collection four is called Bird Talk and the Bird Talk stamp set is by Scrapping for Less. I'm not sure if these are like little parrots. I'm not good with animals, but they are so pretty and I loved coloring them. These flowers, I bright Darice, and they're like those fabric, those thick fabric flowers. So sturdy and awesome. The sequins are by Scrapping for Less and then there are these two tags by Darice. I tried to show you in the light here, but they are gold foil dotted at the bottom. Okay, so here are the bird talk papers. And just a reminder that Scrapping for Less does have paper packs of these. Like you get a little sample, one of each of the patterns, but you can buy additional papers on the Scrapping for Less site. And you guys, I am going to buy a million more packs of this paper because it is so, so pretty. Look at these patterns, and I love that it's a flat pattern, but doesn't it look like there's like gold specks on most of these papers, like this one? Doesn't it just look like there's sequins sitting on the paper? 
so, so pretty. Okay, so next up, you're gonna get four white envelopes, and then you're gonna get cardstock. And this month, there are gold and silver glitter papers, and these are actually adhesive-backed papers. I didn't take advantage of that fact that they are adhesive-backed in my cards today, but there's a lot of things you can do. You don't really need glue. You can just peel off the backing. Then there are blue raspberry papers, limeade, chocolate, snow cone, two sheets of Nina 110 pound smooth solar white. Now this little extra pack of goodies is included if you get the banana split level kit. So you are gonna get a Ranger Distress uh, mini ink cube. I got gathered twigs, but you could get any color. There's a Go Wild Word die by Scrapping for Less, the Exotic Sentiment stamp set by Scrapping for Less, and Alphabet Stickers by Darice. So let's jump right into making a card. I'm going to be using Sketch 2, which is the one you saw on the right there with the oval in the middle of the rectangles. And when I saw this, of course I thought of a gatefold. Anytime I see two rectangles going down lengthwise the card, I always think of a gatefold card. So I have a piece of cardstock. It's eight and a half inches long by five and a half inches tall. And I scored at two and an eighth inches from each side. And then I'm just folding the flaps in towards the center so they meet in the middle. And that's gonna form the base of my gatefold card. So I followed, this sketch actually has all of the measurements right on it. And I pretty much followed that exactly, except that the mat I cut in half so that I could have it you know, like on my flaps. And when I cut it in half, I ended up needing to trim a little bit off the length of each side. So then I also needed to cut a little bit off the length of my matting papers, which is the, the polka dot, which is absolutely fine. So I just trimmed off, it probably ended up being about an eighth of an inch off of the long sides of both the polka dot pattern and the blue paper for my background. I die cut some stitched ovals and this is going to be the center of my gatefold card. So you want your card to be able to open. So only add adhesive on your focal image here, like this is gonna be my oval. Only add adhesive onto one side. I usually choose to add it to the left side, but you could do just the right, as long as you're only adding adhesive to one side. That way your card will still be able to open. If you add adhesive all over that oval, you're going to be gluing your card shut. So I took the One in a Chameleon stamp set from Lawn Fawn, and I'm just going to be coloring it up with my watercolor markers. I haven't used these markers in quite a while. I've been kind of attached to my alcohol markers, but today I just really wanted to do some watercoloring. So I stamped out the chameleon and some of the, the little twigs and the leaves, and I'm just going to color them up with my watercolor markers really easily. I stamped on watercolor paper, I add some color where I think it should be darkest, and then I use my water brush just to pull out that color. Super easy and simple and quick, and I forgot how much I love my Staedtler watercolor markers. Then I cut all of them out, and I'm just going to add them onto the front of my card. So I also stamped a sentiment on a sentiment strip and I added little banner edges with my scissors by cutting up the middle and then from the edge towards the center. I added these onto little foam squares and then I am adding some liquid adhesive to the back of the foam. That way I can kind of move and wiggle my little pieces around. Like here for my sentiment, I'm going to add it where I think it should be, and then I'll come in with my T-square ruler and just kind of nudge it around. And since I have the liquid adhesive on the back of those foam squares, I have the dimension from the foam, but the liquid adhesive gives me that ability to wiggle things around and get them just the way I want. So once I finally figure out where I want this little chameleon to go, this card will be finished. And I'm gonna show you here in a minute how this opens up. And you could definitely decorate the insides of your cards. I usually don't. I leave them blank, that way I can write as much or as little of a sentiment on the inside as I want. But you could definitely add like leftover strips of pattern paper or something to the inside. And here I wanted to show you, I use those little flags. I colored a whole bunch of chameleons and I thought these would be super cute as like cupcake toppers for a party or something. So just a little idea for you. Okay, so let's move on to collection two, and I am going to be using sketch number one for this. 
I'm kind of tweaking this a little bit. I think I kind of tweaked most of the sketches to kind of fit what I wanted. And so you're gonna see here in just a little bit, I'm gonna make a shaker card. I haven't made a shaker card in quite a while and I just felt the urge to make a shaker card. So I'm starting here, I stamped out the little sloth from the Sunny Studio stamp set in collection two. And I'm using my alcohol markers to color him in, really simple shading. I usually start with my dark and blend out to my light. Occasionally I will color the whole image with my lightest and then go in with my mid-tone or my dark and then um, color out with my lightest. Really easy blending. So to create my shaker, I die cut a square frame and I'm going to be adding some uh, strong double-sided adhesive around the edges of that frame. This is going to hold my acetate. So once I get that tape on there, I'm just using my bone folder to really press that in and make sure that it is firmly adhered before I start removing the backing. And I did still have, I always have trouble removing the backing. Who knows why, but I do. Once I get all of that removed, I'm just going to take a piece of acetate and lay that right over the back. And then again, I will use my bone folder and really press and burnish that in to make sure that's gonna hold. And then I'll use my scissors and just trim around the excess where the acetate is overhanging. I'll just get rid of that. I actually triple layered my foam tape this time. Usually when I do a shaker, I do a double layer and I always end up kicking myself later because the sequins and little bits inside don't move the way I want to. So I did a double layer like I normally would and then I just folded my foam tape over again to create three layers of foam tape and I was so happy with the results of using the three layers here. I did the three layers of foam tape and then I trimmed up that foam tape so I could have narrow little pieces of the tape going around my square frame. Now I have my powder tool and I am just coating the inside of that foam tape with powder and this just helps it so the sequins don't stick to any of the little bits of adhesive that might be showing. I dumped in all of the sequins from collection two and as I sat there I thought it just wasn't enough so I ended up actually grabbing the sequins from collection three, dumping them all in and then I looked at it and I was like oh crap that's too much so I used my fingers and took some out. Once I finally got the right amount in there I'm going to be using some of that gold glitter paper to be the backer for my shaker. And when I do that, I cut a piece of the backing paper, whatever it may be, in this case the gold glitter paper, to be larger than what I need. That way I don't have to worry about lining it up perfectly. I can just have my shaker laying face down on my work surface and just slap that backer on. So you're going to see when I come in here, the backer is probably like maybe a quarter of an inch on each side bigger than what I need. I'm just going to set that aside for a little bit with something heavy. I'll use my acrylic blocks or my cell phone or something and let it dry. Once it dries, I go around with my scissors and just trim away the excess so that you can't tell that I ever had a piece that was too big. I use like a little scallop die to stamp my sentiment and then I'm just going to position that behind the little square so that it's kind of peeking out. I will show you the card in just a minute. I'm sorry my head keeps getting in the way. I like to get right over top of my cards to make sure that everything is straight. And again, I will use my T-square ruler just to make sure. I added my little sloth right on the top of my shaker and that card is done. So, so fun. Moving on to collection three, I'm going to be using sketch two. That is the one on the left. And again, I did tweak this one just a little bit. So I know that the theme for this kit is exotic animals, but I was really drawn towards this twine with the flower on it. And originally I was going to try to incorporate the meerkat from this collection, but it just didn't work. The meerkat wasn't sized the way I would want it to be next to the flower. The meerkat looked dwarfed and the flower looked huge. So in the end, I omitted the meerkat and I'm going to be using that on a card later on in this video. So I have a piece of pattern paper here and it is three inches wide. And then I cut a piece of the brown cardstock from the kit to a quarter inch wide and I glued that onto the edge to have that be just a finishing edge. I wanna use my doily on the left side and then I want this flower and twine to be kind of wrapping around the card. 
And originally I thought maybe I just wanted it wrapped around the pattern paper, but I thought it looked better wrapped around the whole card. So I grabbed a second piece of white cardstock. That way I don't have to bulk up the inside of my actual card with the twine. I'm going to create on this white piece of cardstock and then I will end up gluing that whole thing onto my card base. So I've temporarily adhered that doily to where I want it to be and I've trimmed off the excess and then I will just go around with some glue. And I actually did end up taking that piece that I cut off that was overhanging the left side of my card and I glued that on top of the doily so I have like a double layer of the doily there. And I do want to mention be careful when using glue for your doily because it it's thin and if you use a heavy amount of glue it's going to show through. So I just used tiny little bitty dots of my liquid glue and I didn't have any problems at all. I glued down the flower and the twine to the front of my card and just set that aside for a minute, minute and a half to dry. And once it was dry, I am going to wrap that twine around to the back of my card and again, add a little bit of glue and I have some double-sided adhesive there too just to make sure it's gonna hold. When I went to adhere this onto my card base, the twine was kind of bubbling down where it is because it's thick. So I added a couple pieces of fun foam to the back and that kind of offset the thickness of the twine and helped everything be flat on my card. I'm going to sandwich my sentiment in between that twine with some fun foam as well. I'll use my T-square ruler just to make sure it's straight and that is going to finish off this card. Again, not really exotic animals, but I thought it was a super pretty card anyway. For collection four, I'm going to be using Sketch for that one on the right, and this is the Bird Talk stamp set from Scrapping for Less. This little bird, you know, I think he's a parrot, I'm not really sure, but he was so, like, regal, I guess, so I wanted to use, like, a royal blue, and besides that would match the pattern papers. So I'm going back to my Staedtler felt tipped watercolor markers, again just adding some color around the edges where I wanted there to be some shading. And then I'm using my water brush just to pull out the color. So this sketch has done pretty much all the work for me. It has all the measurements and everything right there. So all I did was just trim down some pattern papers. And these papers are so, so gorgeous. And I decided to mat all of them with the gold glitter cardstock just to bring out those little flecks of the like faux glitter that are there. You'll see that in a minute. And I do apologize. I forgot to zoom my camera back out after coloring the bird. <laughs> I'll fix that in just a second here after I get these pieces of paper glued down. Again, just using liquid adhesive. I use that a lot in this video. I was never a fan of liquid adhesive until I started using it more often and now I totally get the benefits of being able to move your pieces around once you've stuck them down onto your card. Like here I didn't get it quite straight so I could just wiggle the corner just a little bit and it was fixed. I wanted to use this little tag that came in this collection, but it seemed a little too tall for my design. So I just trimmed off probably about a half inch from the bottom. I stamped the sentiment on the right side of the card and I added some of the twine. And this is actually, I believe, from collection two. Nope, collection one, this dark brown twine is from. I added that to the tag, and I also added one of those fabric flowers from Doris. So here I'm going to be using the Go Wild Word Dye from Scrapping for Less, and this is in the banana split level. And I wanted to use this little arrowhead pattern because I was obsessed with it, and as well as the meerkat because I didn't use that in my card when I was uh, working with things from collection three. So this card is great for guys. These colors are super manly and also this is so clean and so simple to do. I just use some of the brown cardstock as my mat. I die cut the go wild from that matching brown and then I added my little meerkat right on top. So simple you can make a whole bunch of these and send them out to all the guys in your lives. So here's a little review of all the cards that I made using all four of the collections and the banana split extra goodies pack. I'd love to know which card is your favorite. Leave me a comment down in the description. I definitely think this sloth card is my favorite 
or maybe the gatefold card. I can't decide. But then here's this bird talk papers card, and I'm obsessed with these papers. So really, I love them all, but I'd love to know which one you love the most. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time. Bye.